So you asked, um, what are right-handed and left-handed fermions, and why do electroweak interactions treat them differently? Um, so to get into um, left-handed and right-handed fermions, uh, we need to talk about chirality. And what chirality is, is an object is chiral if um, it is not the same as its mirror image. Um, for example, my right hand um, is the mirror image of my left hand. Like if you look in a mirror, they look the same. So this in a mirror looks like this, but um, these objects are still distinguishable from one another. For example, um, I can never rotate my right hand to look like my left hand. I can get close by doing this, but you can see that they're still not the same. Um, my left hand goes this way when I wave, and my right hand goes this way. Um, so these objects are chiral. So parity is the transformation that um, is like looking in a mirror. So parity takes my right hand and flips it to look like my left hand. Uh, and that means that for every x coordinate, you go to the minus x, for the y, you go to minus y, and z minus z. Um, so it's just a spatial flip. Um, so for massive objects, it's pretty easy to talk about chirality because it really has to do with the shape of the object in three dimensions. Um, but for particles, which are so small we can't see their shapes, um, how do we define chirality? Um, and we start with helicity. So um, for particles, they're quantum mechanical objects. So we know things like their direction of propagation, their direction of mo motion, their momentum. Uh, and we also know things like their spin. Um, so for example, um, electrons can have spin positive one half or spin minus one half. Um, and while you can sort of imagine spin as being rotation about an axis, so a part, you can think of a particle as being like a little top that spins. Um, and if it's spinning this way, it's spin up. And if it's spinning this way, it's spin down. Um, that's not precisely what's going on quantum mechanically, but it's a good way to think about the direction of spin. So um, for helicity, it has to do with whether the spin lines up with the momentum. So um, a particle with right-handed um, helicity, if it's moving this way, um, its spin is going this way. So its spin is going around this, hand, uh, the, this axis, and if I take my right hand and I go in the direction of motion, I'm pointing in the same direction um, that the momentum is. Um, so a left-handed helicity particle um, has its spin going the opposite way. Um, so its spin is going this way, so the direction of the spin is this way, even though it's moving this way. I mean, you can see if I take my left hand and I do the direction of the spin, I'm now lined up with the momentum. So that's sort of where we got the terminology for right-handed and left-handed. So helicity is still not the same as chirality. Um, it's close, right? You can sort of see that this is a right-handed and this is the mirror image, it's the left-handed. Um, but it's not a great definition. Uh, for example, for massive particles, if I'm observing a particle and it's moving this way and its spin is this way, this particle looks like a right-handed particle. But if I get in a car and I go faster than the particle, so now I'm moving faster than the particle, from my point of view, um, the particle is now moving this way, but its spin is still the same. So now it looks like um, a left-handed particle. Um, so the observer can actually flip the direction of the momentum depending on motion, but the spin stays the same. So the helicity changed for a massive particle. So some particles, helicity is exactly equal to chirality, and those particles are massless. So massless particles like photons always move the same speed no matter what speed the observer is going. So for photons, helicity just is chirality. No matter how fast you're going, the helicity is always the same. For massive particles like quarks and leptons, um, helicity is not the same as chirality. Chirality is a more abstract idea, um, so I can't get into the precise definition. Um, but the idea is that chirality is a property of the particle that's always the same, no matter how fast the observer is going. If a left-handed particle um, is observed in one frame, it's still left-handed in this frame. But it's still true that if you take a left-handed particle and you do a parity transformation, it becomes a right-handed particle. So now that you know um, that chirality is a very basic property um, about a particle, um, such that if you have a right-handed particle and you do a parity transformation, you get a left-handed particle, and that if the particle's mass goes to zero, um, chirality becomes helicity. So now you know the difference between left-handed and right-handed fermions. Um, so an interesting thing about the world is that nature actually treats uh, particles with different chirality differently. For example, let's take the electron. Um, if this electron is left-handed, um, then it feels uh, the weak nuclear force. The weak force carried by the W um, 
If it sees the left-handed electron, it interacts with the left-handed electron, and the left-handed electron felt the interaction. On the other hand, if we take the electron and it has all the same properties except now it's right-handed chirality, um, this electron can't feel the weak nuclear force. So if the W gauge boson comes across a right-handed electron, it just passes right through. Um, and the right-handed electron did not interact at all with the W boson. Even though um, this left-handed electron and the right-handed electron are identical in every single aspect except that they have different chirality, um, from the W's point of view, these are completely different particles. The W can interact with this one and the W can't interact with this one. So your question was, um, why do the electroweak interactions treat left-handed and right-handed particles differently? Um, and the answer is that from the uh, electroweak force's point of view, these are different particles. Um, and this is just a fact that we've observed about the world from studying how these particles interact with each other. So if you want more information about this, uh, there's actually a very good article available, um, uh, and it's uh, called Helicity, Chirality, Mass, and the Higgs um, by Flip Tinito, and you can find it at www.quantumdiaries.org.